What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Man, it's been a little while, hasn't it? It's been a minute. It's yeah. We, minute. Yeah, we finished out the year in southern Indiana, and uh, it's officially off-season time. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's starting to get cold. Yes. The weather can't make its mind up. It was 60 degrees yesterday. Now it's windy. It's <laughs> get right back down to 30, so right. everybody's going to be getting sick. <laughs> right. But... We got a lot of stuff going on. We got two pro stock cars that are, one's completely tore apart, the other one's got some major changes going on. We ain't gonna clog this video up with anything about the pro stock cars. Not this one, but we're gonna be getting back on that. Today, we got the back to the 90s unit over here. Kevin had the wheels and tires off of this thing and the spacers from Muskingum County when we were there. So I wanted to get back to the 90s, back to the point where we could hop in it and do whatever we felt like doing with it, whether we take it riding, whatever. And we got down to the final point wheels and tires shocks are back on it spacers and stuff are back on it it's time to set the toe me and kevin thought this would be the perfect time to make a video on setting this toe right and whenever i'm in the garage working uh most of the time my old man's doing something else or whatever um and i'm setting it by myself so i'll show you guys how i do it by myself i'm not sure how long it takes yeah, i'm sure it's a little bit longer than having two people to do it but uh, we'll time it and see, and we'll post that on there. But it's pretty easy. Uh, I forgot to bring my grease plates, which I'm just from being an asphalt racing, whenever we set tail, we always use grease plates. But a couple pieces of cardboard, or um, like what I have is just two pieces of uh, square one foot by one foot pieces of steel, or you can have aluminum, and you just literally put grease in between it, sandwich them together, put them underneath the front tires, push it forward. So that way, whenever you're adjusting tail, the wheels will move versus your steering wheel so right. your wheel will stay straight right and we'll also talk about like where to lock the steering down because you want to lock that down once you get everything set so that way when you get in it your toe might be right but if you don't have the wheel locked down your steering wheel will be off yeah. and to me that's the most annoying thing ever because i've got push buttons on the steering wheel and it's a sport shift it's just a hassle so as does this one have buttons on the steering wheel so that's very important that the steering wheel is straight and stay straight whenever you're uh setting the toe on these so Plus, it makes sure that you have the same amount of turn left to right in your rack, too. So. Yeah, very not very many tools required. You'll need a couple wrenches. I think there's a 14 millimeter wrench on the tie rod itself to turn it. Um, this this car still has the stock tie rod setups in it, so they're actually, I think, a little bit easier to set the toe because you only have that ball and socket up at the rack end. Right. So you only have one side to bust loose. So uh, you know, you take that jam nut loose there. Uh, run it back and then you can start adjusting uh, the tie rod to move the tires in and out and then you'll need a long straight edge uh, just to square the car up from the back wheel to basically set the front wheels at zero well yeah it may not actually measure out zero but it, what it does is it puts your front tires in on the same plane as the rear so that way I mean, like, you can set your toe straight and everything's good where you want it like we run ours an eighth of an inch out to three sixteenths out of front right toe out toe in toe out so when you do that, you get both of them. I think there's toe in the rear end, um, just because it's independent rear and all that stuff. But and it's four-wheel drive. But when you get your tires adjusted on the same plane front to rear, you don't have the, dog, the car dog tracking. Right. You can set your front straight, and if the rear's your front's not square with the rear, then you're going to be driving it down the road sideways, and you don't even know it. So right. at least this way, all tires are working together, going the same direction. And you're also going to need a set of toe plates. Yep. So. We've had a ton of people ask us to help them. I don't know how many times we've set toe at the racetrack. We've done it a bunch of times. Well, I've done you know, at least guys. six yeah. times this yeah. year. Yeah, so we've done a bunch of toe. And uh, get yourself a set of toe boards. Grab that. Grab the set. Grab my set of toe boards over there. You so made Kevin, these I'm, I made these toe boards. You can make these at home. Uh, this is just eighth inch aluminum, flat aluminum. We put a little dog leg down here at the bottom to make them rigid. Put a little slot in here where your tape measures are going to go. You'll measure in front of the wheel, behind the wheel. You can whip these up. Kevin has an old school set made out of plywood. You can make them out of plywood. All you need is something flat. You can straight, go across sturdy. straight, go across. Got a slot in it where you can measure from. Now Kevin's are a little bit more sophisticated, and he brought those because he's going to show you how he exactly how he sets a toe. Because most of the time, like he said a minute ago, he sets a toe by himself. So right, and I got these before I left my previous uh, life down in North Carolina. Uh, they're getting rid of these toe plates, and we use these and uh, Xfinity series and stuff like that and they don't exactly match but they're the, the main thing is when you make your set the distance between 
either the top or the side. You I mean obviously you kind of want to go off the center, measure across the center, but this works too down here. Uh, that's where we've always done asphalt racing. But this distance, wherever you have your slot, needs to be the same position front to back on each toe board. So they need to match. You yeah. make them out of plywood, make them out of like seven eighths plywood if you want. Um, the same thing. It's just the plywood's going to flex a little bit, but I mean you're on dirt. As long as you're in a ballpark, right? You know, asphalt. Exactly. It's crucial. I mean, we choose to measure that stuff down to the sixty-fourth of an inch. So, but uh, but yeah, like anything helps. And the only thing, other, other thing you're going to need, other than your straight edge, if you've completely knocked the front end out of whack or whatever, is you're going to need a set of jack stands to set um, your straight edge on to lean it up against the sidewall of the tires and adjust them accordingly. And then you're going to need two pairs of uh, two sets of vice grips. So you're going to use a vice grip wherever you can get it. The easiest place on the stock unit is up underneath the dash. Um, clamp onto the steering shaft. Put it up against a piece of tubing. We'll show you that here in a second. And then clamp one on the other side of the piece of tubing. So no matter what, when you turn the wheel, it doesn't move. The wheel stays the same spot. And all you're doing is adjusting tires. All right. So we got our straight edge. You got two jack stands. Um, ideally, if you've got Four jack stands and two straight edges. You can do both sides at the same time and be done with it. But um, and the straight edge, the straight edge ain't nothing uh, extravagant. It's uh, literally just a piece of rectangle aluminum tube. It's light, light enough you can pick it up by yourself, pull it around, or you know, just something straight. Doesn't have to be you know anything up in in particular. Just something straight. I, right. I figured this rectangle aluminum tube works works pretty well. So, all right. So what you're looking for is you want. When you get it set, you want the, um, this tube to touch the sidewall front to back on all the tires. But right now, as you can see, there's about a quarter inch gap here, and it's not touching the front side of the sidewall on the back completely, and it's hitting this one. So right now, this right front is towed out further than the left rear, or sorry, the right rear. <laughs> but um, so what we're going to do is we're going to bust this loose, and we're going to square this up, um, and actually, Need to pull this thing forward onto my uh, cardboard, uh, cardboard, uh, cardboard, uh, cardboard grease plates. Grease plate. So all I'm doing right now is just splitting the difference to where there's the same gap front to back on the tire. And then once I get it kind of eyeballed that way, I'll slide them in to where that touches. And as you can see now, that bar is hitting the sidewall of each tire all the way across. Both, both sides. So this side's done. So, now we're on the driver's side. This one's towed in. Just a fuzz. And having a somewhat level surface helps a lot too, but yeah, like I said, it don't have to be perfect. So now this one's towed in, so the wheel must be just a little bit to the right, but as you can see our steering wheel is straight. That's where we're wanting that. And keep an eye on that too. As you're going, keep glancing up there and make sure that steering wheel hasn't moved. Not so important in a three-pedal car, very important in a, sport in, a, in a sport shift car, no doubt. This tire is towed in big time. Yeehaw. Yeah, buddy. She wasn't moving. So. Start turning that tie rod there. As you're threading it in, which means like to the right, it's shortening this up and it tows the tire out on the, on the Y axis because it's got uh, your steering stuff is behind the knuckle. It's on the back side, it's not on the front side, so. So right now we're calling this car is squared front to rear. Squared front to rear. So now you're ready to actually set your adjustment uh, for your toe out. Kevin, why do we run the toe out? Because um, when you toe in, it gives you straight line stability at high speed. Um, it's a little darty. Uh, we tow them out because when you turn into the corner, your left front's going to turn a little bit further than it would on the right. So it helps pull you into the corner. 
Um, it's just overall, like it gives you more stability, more feel into the corner, and it just you go from like an um, eighth toe in, make a sweep to eighth toe out, and it's a completely different feel on how it gets in the corner. It doesn't fight you, Absolutely. doesn't do nothing, but like high speed, you don't really notice it. It, it wants to like any like input on a wheel, it's wanting right. to go that way. So that's what you want because these things have so much rear drive because everything's back there that you got to overcome all that rear bite and by towing it out, it helps pull it down in the corner no matter which way you go. So yeah, it's just it just works out that way. And the same works for asphalt too. So. Well, now we're at zero. We can get the tow boards out. You'll need two tape measures. I got two small tape measures laying up there in the top of that one toolbox. Oh, Kevin's got his two tape measures. Perfect. Um, so what I do is on this side, I get it set where I want it. You know, like when you make, when you put your tow board on, you don't want it to be favored more one front to back or the other. You just want it to be as square as possible. And then this is where it gets kind of tricky. So. You take a uh, bungee cord and you're going to wrap it around. Actually, I need a short one. There's no real rhyme or reason or method to the madness. All you're doing is trying to keep pressure to where this thing will stay tight to the wheel like you've got your foot on it, pushing right. on it like this. That's, that's what you're looking hence for. Hence the two people. Yeah, hence the two people. So I usually try to hook it to the lower somewhere. This gusset plate underneath the ball joint usually works pretty good. And this will keep that toe plate up there snug, obviously, because when you're doing it by yourself, you're going to be on the other side right measuring. The smart end. Yeah, you can be. You're going to be on the smart end of the tape with the other toe board. So you need something to hold this one uh, tight against the tire when you're lacking those other two hands. So there, we're square. Look at that. We're on there. I've even went across and hooked it to the bumper, which it kind of pulls it up. It doesn't really work, but hooking to this lower gusset plate works really well with two like regular, like, I don't know what these are, 12 inch bungee straps. Yeah. They just work out for this tow board. That, so, um, that gusset plate on the bottom of that arm is, is hard to see right now because it's hidden by our sweet aluminum CV CWR, guards. CV, yeah, CV guards. Yeah. So. <laughs> So you find your slot you got in your tow board. Over here, I lock the tape measure down. You know, don't sit. And shove this one across. You know, I'd help you hook that in there, but oh, I just can't. Myself. I just can't do it. Can't do it I just man. can't do it. Can't. You know how many nights I've sat there and just dog cussed doing this by myself until <laughs> I finally got this down to where it actually works. Especially at like midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning, the night before you're racing. And it's also a good way to tell how wide your car is. Right. So what I end up doing is I just put my knee up against it, go up, straight down. Make sure it's set. Front to back looks square. Let me pull a measure. So I go off of the back first. So that's 69 and 5 eighths. And then I look at the front. And that's 70 and a 16th. So you got 1 eighth, quarter, and 3 eighths. So you're at 7 16 toe out right now in the front. Because the bigger number is in the front. Right. Bigger number in the front, toe out. And then when you get to this point, it's kind of tricky because you got to work both sides the same amount. Yeah. Because um, if you start adjusting one more than the other, then your wheel's going to be off. Yes. So we need to toe so it in. You want to do like pick a turn. Um, if you have like the stock set up, it's nice to like pick a sharp edge on there and just rotate. Pick a. You usually you know, take a sharpie, mark yeah. it, mark a ridge or pick whatever. Pick one of those ridges. But I usually go by. Same. Yeah, I usually go by flats. So I'm going to go. There's one, and then there's two. Tone it out. You're making that bellow to deal with because it wants to spring back. Making the tie, lo tie rod longer, basically. 
and it's the opposite direction on this one. So there's one flat, and then there's two flats. Now, when you get to this point, when you're making adjustments, if you've got toe plates, it may not work as good with these cardboard ones, but um, the asphalt racer me wants to roll the car back and forth and jounce it, but really all you need to do, if you've got good uh, grease, grease plates, just give your good shake, let the toe boards fall off on this side, and pick, uh, pick it all back up and try it again. So right there, that is 69 and 7 eighths, and that is... Uh, 69 and 15 sixteenths. So right now we're sitting at a sixteenth toe out. So what we need to do is go barely, yeah, barely on a flat, longer right. on your tire or shorter, shorter on your tire rod, tone it out just a little bit. I mean, this is where it becomes frustrating because it's easy to like right. hunting that number. You got that number in your mind. It ends up becoming screw it. It's good where it's at. Right. Let's just go with it. Right. But uh. But yeah, I, I get like a little bit too uh, if, um, perfectionist on the damn thing. If I can land anywhere between an eighth and three sixteenths, shit. it's getting shipped. Yeah, that's where I've kind of gotten gotten with it. So yeah, at this point, it's starting to get it's starting to be a fine adjustment. So move it just a little bit at a time. Sixty nine and thirteen sixteenths, and that is seventy. Or I'm sorry, sixty nine and fifteen. Yeah. So that's an eighth. A twenty eighth. Ship it. There you Lock go. Everything down. Uh, with the stock ones, it's real nice because you know, I'll even show you. You can just run this thing. Of course, this side's kind of tight. Um, it, like you don't have a lot to deal with. You can just hold that inner. As long as the inner tie rod does not move, you just keep it like that. You can run this thing back in. You can even take, once you get to that point, I recommend taking another Sharpie mark and marking somewhere in there where you know where it's oriented at so it doesn't move when you're tightening this jam nut back up. Run this old girl back up. It doesn't matter when it rolls that outer tire rod in and then just roll it back to where it's, it'll find its center. The aftermarket ones, you got to jam that on both sides. You got two tie rod ends to deal with. So they'll one will cam over this way when you tighten it down. The other one will cam the other way, and it won't float. You want to be able to have both of them to rotate and float freely. And when you do that, sometimes it'll screw your toe, your toe measurement up. So you got to check it after you're done. But with the stock ones, you don't need to. Lock it down and send it. Just go full send, and then come back. And after you touch wheels with people or cartwheel the thing or put it on the side, <laughs> recheck again. <laughs> but now these things, everything moves so much, and these cars yeah. take so much abuse. But when you're in a car, you don't feel like you're abusing anything. These but measurements yeah. will change every single week, yes. week in, week out. I've it's something up, you have to check every single week. I've gotten to the track after checking it at the house and doing it, setting it, and like this thing just does not drive right. I'll come back and I'll check it. It'll be like a quarter or half inch, like right. like way the other way. But it's mainly because there's something else wore out in the car that I didn't catch. Right. So like yeah. I've got a upper control and pivot mount on the chassis that's wore out on the back side of the upper on the left side. And uh, once I figured that out, welded in another washer to hold it in, I haven't had any issues with it. But another thing that will affect it is if you have wheel spacer, that will affect your toe big time. It magnifies it. Yep. So if you're at the track and you don't have wheel spacer on it, you're like, I need to add wheel spacer. You can edit that out. Um, <laughs> um, there's at least one every, every time. There's every at least time. one. So if you don't have wheel spacer and you add wheel spacer to it, and you bore everything back up and you go back out, and the thing's just like at 70, 80 mile an hour, and you're like, wow, I've been chasing this thing. You might have to check your toe, back your yep. toe back off because it went from an eighth and it might be three eighths to a quarter. Yeah. Out, you know what I mean? Not a bad idea when you come up with your toe plate, however you choose, whether it is a piece of plywood, a piece of. And you can buy these. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what, on Speedway Motors and a couple other sites like that, they make a kit that has 
it comes with two basic tow boards like the ones I made and um, two tape measures, everything that you need to set the tow. It's not a bad thing to throw in your in your trailer, you know yeah. what I mean, to, just to have in there. So, I mean, you can buy them. Are you locked down on both sides? I'm locked down on both sides, and that was like just under 19 minutes by myself. That's bullshitting the whole way, not trying to like hurry up and get it done. 18. 20 minutes. Under 20 minutes. You got 20 minutes by yourself with these two tape measures, a set of tow boards, and a straight edge with two jack stands. You can set the tow by that's yourself. It. Yeah, that's all you need. Yes, sir. And that will drastically reduce, well, it will improve how the car feels. Exactly. So. So. So, anyways, that's it. We're out for today. We're gonna go to a brewery, have some fun, drink some yes. beer, eat some food. Yeah. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna throw some axes too. I oh heard, we are. yeah, I heard. Yeah, well, this is dangerous. Yeah, you're dressed well for it's for like throwing axes. axes. You're ready. Look, you're ready, ready to throw axes. So. Yeah, I was like, I didn't want to match my beard. So. so. Uh, as always, yeah, thanks for watching. Freaking bottom button. As, <laughs> as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. We appreciate it. Yes, we do appreciate it. We appreciate appreciate every view that we get. Until and, next uh, time. Until next time. We'll see you later. See ya. I was like, oh, this is it right here. If it don't hook, we're going over. It's oh. going to be bigger than shit. Oh.